Good morning. Thanks for joining. We're going to wait just a minute to uh, let everybody get in. We love questions, so as we get going, feel free to use uh, Q&A. Excellent. I think we've given everybody a chance. So let's get this started. I'm Bill Bice. I'm the CEO at NQZ Works, and I'm here with uh, one of my co-founders, Ken Bassam, who is uh, also a CRO for the company. Hey, Ken. Hey, Bill. How are you? I'm I'm doing great. So we, we are here to talk about something that uh, has worked well for a long time, scan to email, scan to folder. Why? What 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 is the story behind that? What uh, what do you hear from firms when you are working uh, on this? Well, that's it. And we'll, we'll definitely dive into what Qs is and, and uh, what it was and what it's become. I, I think the, the obvious thing is, is just uh, our, our clients really kind of made Qs what it was. We, we set out initially to have a, a centralized place that, that things could go. Um, and then we started looking at, you know, what are some of the shortfalls of scan to email or even scan to folder, and how could we improve on those? So again, tried and true methods, right? But at the same time, thought that there was room for improvement, and we can't take all the credit because our clients actually are the ones that have helped us uh, see some of those improvements uh, kind of along the way. I think, uh, you know, we, we like to think of the value that we're adding, but, but so much of it comes from client feedback. And it was firms that initially pushed us down, down this road because they, they wanted a better way to, to do things. Yeah, absolutely. So um, when we take a look at this, and I don't know, Bill, if you want to talk about this for a second or, or, or whichever, but I think it's a, a really good visual representation of doing things the traditional way, right? But then also using what we call cues and what we have uh, determined is a better alternative uh, with the help of um, some other people uh, confirming that that also. But do you want to walk through this uh, this graphic? Yeah, and you can always do it the, the way that you have, which is walk up to the MFD and send things directly to, to email, to the core systems in your firm, the document management system, the accounting system. We really expanded this to support Hybrid operations. We're we're in a an age where where work from from anywhere is uh, is uh, is pre is very common, and so we we support mobile devices, desktop scanners, workgroup scanners, scanners at home. However, it is that you're getting it into the system, doesn't really matter that much because we're going to put it through the same processing, the same deskewing engine, the same OCR. And it's gonna it's gonna extend the firm's infrastructure to uh, to, to all of those devices. Qs opens up and, and applies workflow around something that previously was just, you know, scanning directly to someplace. And it really came from this idea that how much, how much real work do you want to do at the MFD? I think that's what makes scan to email and scan to folder appealing, right? Because you just walk up to the MFD, you scan it, it shows up in your email or it goes to a folder, and then you can do the work back at your desk. Qs accomplishes that same thing, but allows us to add workflow and a whole bunch of functionality on, on top of that. So we get all the benefit plus, plus huge, huge upside. Yeah, absolutely. So we always kind of refer to it as, as capture agnostic, right? So regardless of the tool that I'm using to capture the document, I should have the very similar user experience kind of across the board. 
and be able to do um, any of the things that that I need to do after I've captured that that scan. And we'll we'll dive in and actually look at software, right? So not not just this slide, but just to kind of reiterate, you know, we spent a, a lot of cycles and a lot of time developing uh, direct integration to the document management systems, the the popular ones out there, so that when you're at an MFD, you have that full capability available to you. And then when you start looking at the, the analytics and the data that we track and things like this, everyone, even though that option was available, would still just scan to email or scan to folder because they didn't want to go through the process uh, as easy as it might be of even selecting the client matter, the, the subfolder that it go, should go to and things like that. So they just go to email and then do it whenever they, they chose or maybe even scan to folder if, if that was an option the firm was using. But what happens there is you, you do lose a little uh, oversight, right? You lose involvement in that process once it just goes to, to someone's inbox. Anything else on this? Or we just kind of jump in and look at some scenarios. Well, and it's, you know, it's not always that simple either, right? Because the person who's scanning may not be the person who, who is uh, profiling. Uh, you, you may have scans that need to go to, uh, you know, to a work group that multiple people are accessing. And so it's it's when you get into a little bit more complexity where where the challenges start to pop in and the fact that you don't have governance and security and controls over how that happens becomes, you know, becomes bigger issues. Yeah, and I think that really presented itself well, when we talk about the digital mail workflow, which has been a great workflow to help us develop out queues. But depending on which office you were in and, and who's scanning and their ability to determine where that should go or, or who needs to be notified or whichever, that really brought to light the whole idea of, of both a shared queue to where you could go to multiple people all at the same time. Uh, even though it's just one copy of the document, right? And then also the the ability to assign delegates. So traditionally, if you go to email, right, it's going to someone's inbox. And unless you open up your inbox uh, to those who you work with, you kind of lose visibility at that point. So being able to have the ability to assign delegates, it really just opens up a portion of your inbox, right? Just the things that, that have been scanned, uh, which we'll take a look at as well. Great. Well, let's, let's dive in. Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, alt tab there. Let's see. There we go. Maybe that's a little bit better. And we'll just get that out of the way one of these times. Okay. All right. Um, let me see here. There we go. So for today's purposes, we're just going to um, simulate uh, a few different things, simulate some scans and kind of what the user experience is. Uh, one very important thing when we when we are scanning uh, using NQ ZebraWorks, we present a uh, common interface across uh, any application you might be using or M any MFD, right? So our interface is always going to remain the same, and that's true if you're using a desktop scanner. Slightly different if you're using your mobile uh, device, as as one might imagine. But for today's purposes, you know we're walking up to the MFD and we're trying to tell it uh, what we want to do. So as I do this, and, and just to cover it quickly, there, there is always the, the cover page option that you have. So if you're doing you know, mass scanning or, or more than one or whichever, you can just print out a barcode cover sheet in order to route that wherever those, those documents need to go. But for today's purposes, we're gonna more look at the kind of the end user experience of, of using queues. So when I walk up to the device, uh, each firm can configure this however makes sense for the, the functions that they are using. Again, today we'll just focus on, on scan. And then I have to authenticate, right? So I can use a, a building uh, code or however I'm authenticating the device for today's purposes. Since I'm not in front of the device, we'll just use my, my login. And then after I log in, we're going to determine based on who that user is, uh, all the options that would be available to them. Now, what we see most often is firms removing some of these other options, right? And just having my scan queue. And that will be where a lot of the focus is. Uh, to tie back to Bill's example, if we are scanning something and we don't know who it goes to or, or where it should go or, or whichever, we have some firms that are just going to like a centralized coding group, right? So you can just scan it, it goes to that group, everybody receives a desktop, 
no, notification or, or an email notification or, or something along those lines so that they know something's hit that inbox and, and we need to go assign it to the right person or get it to the right place or, or whichever. But again, for today's purposes, and we've left this on as well. So if you have a, a document management system you're using and you have users that are really resistant uh, and want to just do the traditional way and, and go through the motions here, you certainly can. Uh, what we found is, you know, for, for the best adoption, keeping this super simple and just mimicking scan to email, scan to folder. And what I mean by that is I want to make as little um, or make as uh, little decisions as I have to while I'm at the MFD. So I walk up, I just choose my scan queue. Now you can set up different categories and tags. These are optional. So when I talk about making decisions, you can make it, you know, just bypass this if you would like. The reason that this is kind of cool is if I'm scanning something or somebody's scanning and I want to mark it private, then there can be security that are assigned to those things. But for today's purposes, we'll just say scan and uh, let's just make it mail and next. And then I'm just going to simulate a scan. And the scan comes, comes across. Now, depending on the device that you're using, there's a ton more options that you can put here if you want to continue to do, you know, to build on the job. If you're just going to the next document, I've just got a few selected here, but get the preview of, of, of what we've scanned, the ability to name it directly at the device. So I'll just uh, title this a complaint. And then for now, I'm just going to finish and log out. So aside from the document tag, and the document category, I made zero decisions. I know that it was going to my queue, which we'll we'll see what that means. And so I just walked up, scanned, and I'm ready to go back uh, to doing whatever I need to do. That scan is going to be available to me immediately back at my desk. And if I want to work on it right then, I, I have the ability. Or better yet, if one of my delegates is going to work on it, they have an immediate ability to, to start also. So what that looks like if we go into a uh, scan queue is anything that I've scanned or anything that's been scanned for me is going to be in my scan queue inbox. So you'll see the document that we just scanned. Uh, if you have bionic vision, you can probably see that that thumb uh, thumbnail there. What um, it's been cleverly named in this instance, what the status is. So has somebody opened it? Has somebody actioned it? Whichever. Uh, the categories and tags, uh, pretty consistent with my use of those. Uh, how many pages and when it was created. And then what, what's cool too is that there's a built-in archiving and that's built-in archiving and it's it's fairly granular. So you can choose based on what type, how long you want it to, to stay there. And then you can customize notifications that's going to alert somebody, not only that they have something that's been scanned to them, right? But um, all of their delegates gets notified. And then in addition to that, you can send notifications when something is going to, as we call purge uh, or archive, because this is a temporary holding spot. It's really a, a place, one place that I can go to see anything that, that I've scanned or has been uh, scanned for me. And I'll pause for just a second. Uh, anything to, to add before we dig a little deeper, Bill? Yeah, this is like the, the Starbucks of documents. You you don't live in Starbucks. Your, your documents don't stay here. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, way station to, to get things to the right place. Yeah, absolutely. So remember, and I did very little at the MFD. I got it to this inbox. It reaches out to anybody who's my delegate or to myself. And, you know, if you, if you had a, just a ton of documents in there, you, you have the ability to search. You can filter by any of your tags or categories. So another reason that those are helpful. But for today's purposes, we'll just um, find one here. Let's see. It'll be pretty similar. I believe. Um, so I can just pull open the document again if I don't want to work on the thumbnail. And what happens at that point is, uh, and this is a one pager, but it would show me the ability to, you know, be able to sort it differently if I wanted to remove pages. And I might pull up a different example here real quick. Um, just going back to my uh, to scan queue and we'll just select this one here. So when I come through again, we've pulled open the document. We can make sure that that you know if we wanted to send it through the the quality process, we could have done that. That's just an option on the workflow. But right now, I'm just looking at the document and I'm determining what it is. I can rename the document. I could uh, give it a different tag. I can really change any of those those properties. 
but I might want to do something else with it, right? So I see that it's a complaint. You know, this needs to go to a different department. I can just automatically move it to, uh, you know, the docketing team or the records team, or if it's an invoice, maybe to the accounting team. And then anybody who's part of that team would receive uh, a notification that, that something's hit that inbox and allow them to, to action that. I could also just say, hey, you know what? This doesn't belong to me. I can come through and reassign it to someone else, add a comment that says, hey, I believe this is yours or, or whichever. Um, or I might just want to change owner because I'm not going to do anything with it. And it's an easy way to notify them that, albeit, you know, although I scanned it to myself or, or someone scanned it to me, I'm going to move that over to you. So they get a notification that, that something's hit their, their inbox at that, at that point. Now, additionally, you can come through and there's Adobe style uh, PDF editing built into the process. And the whole goal of this is, is not to be the, the firm standard PDF editor, but we had a lot of people who were asking, um, we had a lot of people who were asking us to, uh, you know, how can we be, how can we have uh, editing capabilities available to us as a part of this workflow? Because I don't want to download it, right, uh, to my desktop and I don't want to, uh, then edit it or wait till it gets to the DMS to edit it. I just simply want to make a note, maybe redact something, maybe uh, stamp it, right? Put a signature line on it, whatever that I need to do. So you have all those tools available to you directly within here. And then upon once you're done, you can just click save. And at that point, um, you can choose what you want to do with the document. Right, so I can come through and uh, we'll just go back to queue and look at some some of the different options. But if I don't want to go through any of those steps and I know exactly where it needs to go, I can just select this, choose route, and then any option that the firm set up for me is going to be available for me for me here. Right, so I could go to to OneDrive. If you did need to email outside of the firm, that's still a use case you could make uh, possible. If you wanted to get it to your DMS, and I. Just using one particular example, we, we support all the uh, major DMSs or if you had an expense management system that you're using. But so directly from my desk, I can come through here. It knows who I am because I'm in my queue. So it pulls over my favorites, my matters, my work list, things like that. And I just kind of go through and say what folder I'd like it to belong to, hit next. Um, I could re -re -describe or rename it if I'd like, choose the file format that it needs to go to whether or not it's going through quality queue prior to, to getting there, and then just hit route and finish. And now that document lives in, in this example uh, back in the, in the DMS. One now, of the what great things about doing this via workflow, Ken, is that you, you don't have the problem. If, if you get a document that comes in and you email it to five different people, the question of, of who's, it gonna, who's going to profile it, do we know that it got profiled? Uh, one of the great things about queues is we have the central place. Everybody sees what's happening with uh, with that document. Yeah, absolutely. So, and and that's what we talk about all the time. Hey, that that's pretty slick. But I can also just send it to email, um, right? And and that's pretty fast as well. And then I can use a profiling tool from within email. But you do lose a little bit of visibility into into the process, which Bill's referring to. Um, so within this, I can also just come over here to my activity stream and what we do, and that, that's probably enough, enough activity, but we'll pull up a, another example. I can come through and look at any date range that I would like. I can base it on what type of queue it was, what the document current status is, and then you'll see a complete uh, audit trail, right? So everything that's happened with this document since it was scanned. So it does give you that uh, extra ability to know that it was scanned, to know that you got it, and in fact, even know what you did with it, right? So it was deleted by me uh, this morning, it looks like. So you have the ability to track and monitor all those things. But then even visually back here, let's say that I'm receiving all these scans, but I don't intend to ever put them in a DMS, but I still wanna know what work's being done on my behalf. You'll get a visual indicator down here that these documents have already been taken care of. Right, so that's already been routed to the, the DMS. So if I don't want to even view those, I can turn that view off, right? And just see the ones that, that are left to do. But what we found is a lot of people like this ability so that you can uh, visually see the, the work that other people are doing. 
Now, there's some more uh, in-depth audit trails as well that you would have in addition to activity stream. That's kind of an end user uh, view, if you will. And then you'll notice over here to the left, you can have as many queues as makes sense for the firm. And you can be a member of as many queues as, as makes sense. Obviously, my queue is, is typically limited to yourself and to whoever you've uh, created as, a, as one of your delegates. But shared queues, for example, records or accounting or whichever, you can just have a team and, and all of them would be notified at that point uh, in order to um, know that something's uh, hit that inbox. So we've been talking about queues a lot out there and, and we've uh, got great adoption from firms using this. Uh, we do have some folks maybe at the firm who say, hey, I think queues is great for everybody but me. I still just want to receive all of my stuff via email because that's how I've always done it. And, and that's where I work. That's my desktop. So at the end of, I guess, end of Q1 last year, we decided to try and make that as, as close as possible with still honoring kind of the idea of, of queues. And so we built uh, queues for Outlook. So what happens within this kind of a weird preview pane, but what happens within this is I, I receive a new document notification. So I still get that, that kind of comforting feeling that, hey, I've got something that's in my inbox. It looks like an email, right? And it, and it has an attachment, albeit it doesn't, right? So there's no attachment. I can't accidentally forward this to somebody else. I can't take up, you know, massive storage uh, in the exchange store if, if, if that's a thing, right? Um, I can access it directly if I wanted to go to my queue because I want to go actually work on it and get it to the DMS or maybe do some editing or whichever. So you have a direct link to access it. You can treat this just like a normal email. So I could forward it over to somebody and say, oh, we got to get on this right away, put my own commentary along on that note. But again, I'm not just continuing to forward attachments to multiple people and things of that nature. You'll notice over here to the right, you get everything that's one, either in this email uh, or visually, I kind of like the just my scan queue. So it exposes everything that we just looked at, but it's doing it from within my, my inbox. Um, I am in Kelly's inbox rather. So it would show everything that's in, in Kelly's inbox for, for scan queue. But you can get that visual indicator again that something's happened to it. Uh, if you want to look at the document in more detail, um, they're all the same, by the way, I use the same uh, example quite a bit, but I can come through and say categories and see what the tags were. And then if you're using 365, you're going to get uh, a new tab in order to view the document. But you can pull open the full document here, go through it, decide what before you send that email, what might need to happen. If you're using the desktop version, it opens just like, a, um, like it normally would. Uh, or if you're using Outlook on your phone, uh, you have the ability, you'll receive those immediately as well. So just kind of a byproduct of integrating universally with Outlook. If you're on a mobile device and using Outlook versus the native mail uh, application, you'll receive your scans immediately in, in this exact same, same format. So if I'm, if I'm Kelly, an attorney at the, at the firm, and I'm, you know, on my way to the client or on, on my way to court and somebody back at the office scans something for me, I'm going to get it immediately in in Outlook, the moment it's scanned, so we we deliver the scan, the 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 moment that you scan it, even if the all of the processing hasn't uh, hasn't been OCR'd yet, we haven't done all the processing yet, but we deliver it to the recipient right away. And from Kelly's perspective, she she never needs to to go anywhere besides Outlook. So it's the same benefit of scan to email. You do it all within Outlook, but we've added the additional benefits of, of having workflow and oversight and governance around the process. Yeah, absolutely. And not to, to go into to too much depth, but I think that's an important um, from, a, from an end user experience, right? So I scan a 200 page document, I get the preview immediately. And once I get back to my desk, I'm gonna see uh, that document immediately. And then in the back end, depending on the type of document is where we're doing the OCR and the cleanup and the de-skewing and everything like that. Uh, with the Abbey search engine that, that we use. So that's going all in, in the background. So if somebody gets that document, it's not even OCR'd yet, but they say, you know, I've got to get it into my DMS immediately. Uh, that's great. They can profile it. And then we'll just save that profile till we're done with the document and then go through it in the DMS. But from the end user's experience, 
there, there is no delay and they're not waiting for the entire document to come through or, or anything of that nature. Right, and one page document, not, not an issue, but you might be scanning a, a hundred page court document and you need, you need that right away. Absolutely. So I'm going to stop sharing here for a second and attempt to um, go into, we talk about capture agnostic, right? So I want to go through and, and, and show the app. So show what that, that looks like. And Bill, you could probably answer the question before it's asked um, when we start talking about, about mobile applications. So we're, what we're going to show here is, is our uh, iOS app. We're uh, launching the Android version of that this, this quarter, which is a common, uh, common, common request. Uh, this, th this is always a, uh, a fun conversation because uh, people are doing scanning on their mobile devices. It's just how, how are they doing it? And do you have insight and in, in, uh, in control over it? Yeah, we talked to, I'll let everybody see my, uh, all the apps on my, my first page. This is my actual phone here, but the, uh, we talk about that all the time, right? We had, we met with some firms at uh, Legal Week and they'd said, um, you know, we don't allow people to use their devices to capture documents and kind of had a discussion about that and said, well, I, you, you allow it, you just don't manage it, right? Because we know just human nature is going to use my camera or my notes feature or something like that to go take a picture of a document. And then at that point, um, email it to myself, which is pretty standard, and then decide what I wanna do with it. We know that that's happening. Uh, we audited one firm when we were installing the app and they they did a little quick polling around the, um, uh, around the firm and they had nine different applications that people were using to capture scans. And the, the thing that we're really proud of and that we did intentionally, right, is we clean up after ourselves. So I'll get off my homepage here real quick. So when I open, go into an app and I, I'd already authenticated, we use whatever authentication system uh, that the firm supports, right? So you do have to, to log in that, that one time, but I pull open and it's showing me my scan queue. And although it shows me my activity, so it shows me that I had a few private scans. I did one that was discovery and, and scan, right? But um, there's nothing there. The document's never stored on the device. It's only within our app long enough for it to be encrypted in transit. So we do clean up after ourselves. We know that that's a, a common problem that if somebody is using the native camera to capture, the, uh, capture that, and then it lives in their pictures or it lives in their notes for however long that the, until they lose their phone, right? And then somebody else can get it. So we made a conscious decision to to clean up after that. We do the exact same thing for desktop scanners. So if you're if you are remote, and you're using one of those, and you scan it to a, a monitored place to get it to the queue, then we'll we'll clean up after that also. So just kind of a a, a bit of a fail safe as as far as that goes. So this is just showing me my activity. You'll notice right over here to the right, I could choose a photo. So if it is already on my phone and I want to do that, I could. I could take a photo, I can choose a document. So a document that I've saved to my device or whichever, or I could scan. Um, and I'm just gonna take this here real quick and see uh, my son's math homework there. And I'll just use this photo. Uh, it gives me the ability to name it. Uh, then I can come through and we'll just do something a little bit differently, make it scan and just hit send. And what's cool about that is so, that's now in, in my queue because I didn't want to tell it who to go to or whichever, but it's also in anybody for whom is my delegates queue. So in Bill's example of, um, you know, being on the go, maybe I'm at a client site and I want to begin working on something immediately. I could snap a couple of pictures and then immediately have my delegates receive that um, because it hits my queue and then notifies them of, of that fact. So the ability to, you know, to scan it, to take photos, to choose a document, um, all just to get it over into or back to queues uh, directly from here. Yeah, it's amazing how good the, the scanners are on smartphones now. I mean, we all we all use them. And so it's, you know, su super easy if you've got a, a few page document to just sitting there on the conference room table to go ahead and scan it with your phone. And get it uh, get it sent up to to your queue, your 
assistant's going to get a notification about that uh, immediately and, and then they can take it and, and run with it. Excellent. I'm going to go back to this, uh, to where we were. So you'll see over here on uh, some of the, the purge reminders, that's the desktop notification, the real time that we were talking about earlier. I don't know that we had, had seen one of those yet and just dismiss that. So the the really the last thing with, within queues, there, there's a ton of flexibility, right? So you get to determine for your firm, what's the best way to use it, uh, the best way to use shared queues, the best way to use individualized queues, but versus going to email and, and losing visibility and, and an audit trail of that. We know what got there. We just don't know much after that, what, what occurs. Um, or going to a folder. I know that that example that we had, we talked to one firm and uh, their IT director was very proud of the fact that they did not uh, scan to email any longer. They scanned to folder. And then from that, they, they profile using PDF back to their DMS. And I asked how the attorneys are involved in that process and, and to which they replied, well, we email it to them from that folder uh, after we profile it. So it, it really is kind of a best of both worlds to get it there, let anybody be able to see it, decide what they want to do with it. And you can choose as many different destinations from within here. You saw OneDrive earlier as well, if that's something the firm's taking advantage of. But those are just basic examples um, that you can go through and, and create based on what, what makes the most sense. This whole process is, is also enveloped with uh, dashboardable reporting, right? So individuals can see the stuff that they do, but maybe more importantly, uh, another just example as well is when you start installing uh, or installing queues, you can go through and see how people are using it, right? So we could see if they're still going to email, still going to the DMS, uh, what types of documents they're scanning, things like this. And again, just an example of a dashboard, but all of that's wrapped in, uh, in addition to the audit trail directly within the, the Scan Queue platform. So while we're talking about that, Ken, uh, Barry made a great note in Q&A, which is that the, the mobile example we're just using, it's, you know, it's great for expenses. You just uh, capture that, send it to your queue, and then you can, you know, pop it over to Chrome River or whatever expense management system you're using. Absolutely. Thanks, Barry. You always got the good ideas. One, one uh, detail I'll point out about uh, the profile and DMS you were just talking about is that the links that we send uh, via email in Queues for Outlook, that, that email gets sent right away the moment it's scanned. If it's then profiled by your assistant or by a, a central profiling team, those links just automatically transition to be a direct link to uh, to iManage. So you're always getting to wherever the the one storage place is for that document. Absolutely. Well, Bill, I think that's uh, you know try to make it more complicated if I could, but the the process that we're trying to replicate is one that's extremely easy, meaning that I walk up to a device and make very few decisions. And then I get it to some place that I can either myself or, or someone else can do something with it um, at the appropriate time and get it to the appropriate destination. But uh, that's kind of a quick run through of, of cues. If anybody's interested, happy to, to go into a deep dive at, at another time, just reach out to, to myself or to Bill. We can make sure and, and get that set up. Anything else you wanna add, Bill? Well, it take, you know, it takes some work to to make it uh, make it simple. So it's good that we can uh, that we can demo it quickly. Um, I wanted to point out that one of the the reasons that scan this discussion around scan to folder comes up is that as as firm IT infrastructure consolidates and is moving to either centralized uh, data center or being moved into the cloud. You know, there's a real desire to, to stop having access to network folders for users in general. And so it's a, it, it's a, it's a useful capability to have. Uh, so there's, there's reasons to be able to do that. Um, but it's really not great from an IT or security standpoint. And so this is, this is just really a much better way to accomplish the same, the same task. So Excellent. I think you've done a, an awesome job of showing it off. I uh, appreciate you doing all the all the work. 
I don't know. I, I love showing it off. Um, if we have, we can take a minute or two for, for questions. If there are any, it looks like one maybe came through on the, the Q and A now that I can see the zoom screen. Well, we're, uh, we're going to, we're going to be meeting up at ILTA, which was, uh, I don't think that's a question, but it is a, a good point. <laughs> we're, we're less than three weeks out. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be an awesome show this year. Yeah, no, that's a great point. If you want to see any of this in more detail, Bill and I will be locked in a uh, demo room for three days or so. Uh, so feel free to to come by and see us. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't, uh, we, we rarely escape, which is kind of good because we have uh, a lot of firms to meet with. But uh, so we'd love to see you, but you may have to actually come by in order to, uh, to find Ken and I. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate the time. Have a good day. Bye.